Well, we all know strokes can happen to anyone, and having a stroke really puts you at a higher risk for having a second one. Strokes, in fact, are the fifth most deadly illness in the U.S., and 75% of them happen in people over the age of 65. For much more now on stroke awareness, we're joined this morning by Dr. Anthony Araha of Synergy Longevity Centers in Novi. Thank you so much for being here this morning. Thank you so much for having me. So first of all, when we think of a stroke, are we typically looking at people over the age of 65? or is this something that can affect anyone? So it can affect anyone. Three quarters of people who are affected are over the age of 65, but then we have to keep in mind that that means 25% of people are under the age of 65. So it's not a disease that's exclusive to people who are over the age of 65. It's really good to keep in mind the symptoms uh, of a stroke so that if you're under the age of 65, remember that 25% percent chance of this happening with you. Okay, so you mentioned symptoms. What should we be looking out for? Absolutely. So one thing to think about is the FAST mnemonic, F-A-S-T. The first is facial droop or facial weakness. So if you notice that suddenly someone has a facial droop, that's one sign of a stroke. The second is arm weakness. So if they're holding their arms up and one arm starts drifting downwards, that's another sign of a stroke. And S stands for slurred speech. Um, so if somebody's talking and all of a sudden their speech is slurred, that can be concerning for a stroke. And the T stands for time to call 911 because in a stroke, time is brain. So the sooner you get to the hospital, the sooner your treatment can get started. So when do you call 911? I mean, you, you know, you mentioned drooping. Is that something that you can feel uh, yourself personally? Or is it something like, let's say I'm looking at you and I'm like, I start to notice some changes in your facial structure? Yeah, great question. So people usually notice it when they're looking in the mirror. Okay. So they don't feel it themselves. So they'll either look in the mirror and say, you know, family member noticed that my face was drooping. As soon as you notice that, it's time to call 911. There shouldn't really be a delay in waiting to see if anything gets better. And is it something that you physically feel? Like you mentioned uh, changes in, in your arms or obviously changes in your face. Do you, if you're suffering from a stroke, um, it, it, do you actually feel that? Usually not. Huh. Usually not. These are usually symptoms noticed by other people okay. or somebody will be holding their phone in their hand and all of a sudden their phone drops out with them, with them without them noticing that their hand grip got weaker so it's usually not symptoms that you feel okay so you don't so let's talk about common risk factors what what are the the biggest ones that you typically see yeah so the most common risk factors are high cholesterol high blood pressure diabetes obesity smoking these are the more common risk factors for diabetes and uh, for stroke and for looking at stroke prevention you want to really try to either prevent those risk factors from ever developing or modifying those risk factors and preventing them from causing worsening disease. So basically trying to maintain good general health. Correct. Okay. And then, you know, interesting, we mentioned just before introducing you that having a stroke actually increases your chances of having a second stroke. Why is that? That's a, that's a great question. And I think it has to do with the initial risk factors. Um, somebody who has that initial stroke will tend to not have great blood pressure control or control over their diabetes. And sometimes that rolls in and continues when somebody has a, another stroke. Um, you are also, there's a predisposition to have another stroke, as you mentioned, when you have that initial stroke. So th I think it's related to the risk factors that, um, lead you to have that initial stroke. And then, you know, when someone does suffer a stroke, whether you are 65 and older or younger, I'm sure the rehabilitation process is very different depending on your age and, and a variety of other factors, but what's the recovery process like? It really depends on what part of the brain was affected by the stroke. So some people where all they experience is arm weakness, the recovery will be much different than somebody who has difficulty swallowing or difficulty with arm and leg weakness or facial droop. Um, so it really depends on what part of the brain is affected and that will really dictate what their rehabilitation is like. Hmm. All right, fascinating, important tips for you to know and definitely uh, for your loved ones as well, symptoms to keep in mind. Thank Absolutely. you so much, Dr. Raha. We appreciate you being here with us. Thanks for having me. All